Hey, this is Panzer with Checkmate Gaming, and I'm going to bring you a video guide of Jungle Scion, probably my favorite jungler and favorite character in the game, not to mention my best character in the game. A lot of people in solo queue will probably uh, yell at you a bit for choosing Jungle Scion, and be like, that'll never work, blah blah blah, but it's actually really good and probably almost on par with Warwick's jungle and speed, and really good for ganking too, because you have a ranged stun. We're going to be opting to play Scion this game as AD attack damage, and we're going to be starting off with cloth armor, 5 health pots, pretty standard for junglers, and I'll be going through my entire jungle routine, including dragon and a couple ganks if I get the chance. Skill-wise, we're going to be one point in your shield, and then maxing your E, your enrage ability, second, and then getting your stun at level 4. And after that, focusing all on E and your ult when you can. For runes this game, I'm running uh, armor pen reds, mana regen per level blues and yellows, and movement speed quints. And one thing to note while you're jungling, you never want to use your shield more than once per spawn on the creep camps, and only twice on the runes to make sure you have enough mana to always do them. If you use two on the runes like you see me do here, I mean uh, on the small camps like you see me do here, I'm going to be short mana for when I need to do golem, it's going to get a little close. But yeah, jungle sign, it's super easy, it's really fast, and you have really strong ganking power, that's why I really love it. I um, used to think AD sign was probably complete trash, and I've only ever played him AD, I mean at AP, up until I started jungling him, but when I started jungling him, I really changed my mind, it's really good, and uh, I'm not sure it's better than AP in any way, but in the situation when it calls for it, AD sign is the way to go. The most important thing about jungling Scion and any character is making sure to gank. I don't, like, every time I solo queue, I see these junglers, they sit there and just play PvE raid style WoW and just sit there and farm 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 and it doesn't help your lanes it doesn't help you win the game you get a gank off and then you can take dragon or even a tower if you get the chance and that's what's gonna win you the game not farming up ten more creeps than I did and I think partial problem is that uh people just don't know how to jungle we get stuck in these solo queues and then it gets down to your last pick and we don't have a jungler yet and then Warwick's still open so you choose Warwick even though you don't play Warwick very often and so you're not going to pull off these amazing ganks. You're not going to get some awesome creep score and do the dragon at two minutes and stuff like that because you're not used to it. And a lot of people in solo queue are really close-minded when it comes to jungling. They think you can only do it on Warwick, Olaf, maybe Zinzau or Udyr, and that's about it. When in fact you can jungle a lot of good things like Morgana, Alistar even. He's one of my favorite jungles actually, Alistar. And uh, Ram, Miss Malphite. There's amazing junglers in this game. Almost every character can do it pretty decently. So if you're ever stuck in a situation where you need to play a jungler for your team, just pick one of your favorite characters that are open and just try to jungle with them. The worst that's going to happen is you're going to lose a solo queue, which you're going to lose anyway if your teammates feed, which they probably will because it's solo queue. So just take a risk, try it out. But now back to the gameplay. Uh, I just hit level 4, and I don't have red yet, but I do have my blue buff and my stun. And our Janna just called out that bottom was really overextended, so I'm going to go in and try to see if I can get a kill and basically just want to run it behind them, use your stun, and then you want to lead them by walking in front of them, hitting them, then walking in front of them again, and keep hitting them. Now normally this is when I'd go for a dragon, but I don't have my razor yet, and the creeps are too far pushed to take a tower, so I'm just going to farm a little bit, and then head back to base, pick up my razor, and see if I can take a uh, dragon after that. The basic item build I'm going for this game is going to be Riggle's Lantern, uh, Yuma's Ghost Blade, a pair of boots, and uh, after you get your Yuma's, you have three options. You can either go for a Phage, a Zeal, or an Affinity Edge. Each have their own uh, purpose. If you have trouble keeping up with your opponent, you go for the Zeal. If you are getting focused a little bit, you get your Phage. And if you need the extra damage or you don't need to catch up to any of them, you go straight for the IE and you'll just do massive amounts of damage. Of course, just like any guy, these are what I recommend. It doesn't mean they're the best items in the game or the best choices for this character, but these are just what I've been using and they're working out, so I've been stuck with it. If you have any better items to get then by all means let me know or build them and of course if they have like a magic heavy team or something pick up the banshees it doesn't hurt now the clips in this video are actually from two different games this one these clips right here are focusing mostly on the jungle and ganking while the other clips towards the end of the video will be focusing on my roles and team fights and how jungle scion does well when it comes to supporting your team as well as defeating the other team's carry these are from some uh, arranged team 5v5s around the mid 1500s to 1600 area. We were running uh, our team with a few people who haven't played very often, so their rating was a little lower. The other team this game are all around the 1500 rateds for their range 5s ELO. 
Mind you, their Heimerdinger has about a 1700 ELO for solo queue, because I remember playing with them earlier in the day, and it was kind of nice to see them again. But uh, their team comp, they don't have a lot of synergy together, and they don't have a lot of communication, so it was kind of a slaughter of this game, I guess. Uh, but they were not going to beat Jungle Sign, even if they were the best players ever, because Jungle Sign's the best. Anyways, now I'm going to go try for the dragon, and normally this would be a bad idea, because since I just killed Kale, if our team collapses, we'll have more players in them, and we'll end up getting it, even if they do have it warded. And I don't think they do, because our, I've been checking everyone's items, and uh, our Janna has been clairvoyant, saying they're Olaf, and he hasn't picked up any wards yet, so I think I'm pretty safe. And to kill a dragon, you just basically pop your alt and auto-attack it. Your alt will keep you at full HP, and you'll kill it pretty gosh darn quick. And just to further prove they don't have any wards, uh, I'm coming to gank bottom lane, and they're pretty oblivious to me coming up behind them. So I'm going to get a couple of nice kills and a nice little kill sequence coming up here. And you do not want to feed a Scion ever, so always play it safe when you're laning against a good jungler that can gank. Now, just a few moments since that last kill, uh, Galio's returned to the lane, and they think they're safe because they have three people in the lane, but the lurking jungle Scion does not care because he's jungle sign he'll just kill everybody so let's see how this works out for them with three people in lane versus me john and i are going to open up on the sauna take her out and then i'm going to collapse to the brush so that uh melon or Jana can heal me up and here i get extremely low on hp but this is what you have to do i guess is uh if you notice that you're about to level up and you have your smite off cooldown just hit a creep with it i actually lived because of it i had enough mana to use my shield because I leveled up from that. And so I'm gonna almost get away. Unfortunately I get really greedy here and run after this uh, Galio with 3 quarters HP when I have literally 5 HP. And Kale comes and cleans. So if you ever do try Jungle Scion you should note that 5 HP will not save you even if you are a super durable tank with amazing life steal. I talked about it a bit but leading is really important for Scion. And what leading is is when I, uh, I hit them I take a step in front of them, I hit them again, I take another step in front of them, and I keep hitting them. This way, I'm always beside them, and they're not going to get away from me ever, unless they have a long CC or, like, exhaust or something. I mean, you can see me do this in just a second here on Heimerdinger, where I keep leading him, I'll hit him once, I'll run ahead of him, and I'll just keep doing this until he eventually dies. And now you're about to see the amazing damage and life steal, as well as the durability that Jungle Scion possesses. Unfortunately for them, they think I'm going to run away, but... Jungle Scion, he doesn't care about towers, he'll just out life steal them. And I'm actually going to get a very beautiful quadra kill here, in between both the enemy turrets. Very sexy indeed. My favorite thing about Scion is actually how little items he needs and how little damage he needs to do such amazing damage. His E ability and his ult are going to give him all the attack speed and all the damage he really needs, which is why I build crit on him. Not to mention crit is really strong on anybody with life steal. Especially massive lifesteal like Scion's 100% lifesteal at level 16. The reason I like getting crit so much in uh, LOL or at WoW or any game where crit and RNG are available is because crits are unpredictable and if you can't predict what the opponent's going to do, it's a lot harder for them to counter it. Just like you say if you had a map hack or you're playing Halo with your friends on Xbox and you see their screen and they can't, you're going to know what they're going to do next and you're going to do something to counter them or beat them using your knowledge they don't have. And that's where crit's amazing because they don't know how much damage you're going to output. They might have an idea, and they might stay in the fight too long, thinking they might survive one or two more hits, and then you crit them and kill them and win the game, or push an extra inhib or push a tower or something like that. Not to mention, crit and lifesteal have an amazing synergy together where you can land a crit and then also heal a huge chunk of your HP because you hit that guy so hard with that massive crit. Letting you stay in the fight longer than you should have just because you landed that crit which in turn makes crit almost like survivability mixed with lifesteal, especially Scion's kind of lifesteal. But you never want to get too much crit. Anything over 32% crit is going to make you go over your optimal DPS, and you'll just be wasting stats if you get any more than 32% chance to crit. Which is why Yuma's Ghost Blade mixes so well with these items, because Yuma's plus a Zeal is around 30% chance to crit, Yuma's plus a Green Pot, around 30% chance to crit, Yuma's plus an IE, all around 30% chance to crit, which is going to give you the optimum DPS, if you pay attention closely, you can see some of the huge numbers I'm able to pull off with just a Yuma's Ghostblade and pots. It's honestly really amazing damage for such simple items. And you have such durability and lifesteal that you can simply just dive towers without even having to worry about them. Now here's some clips from a different game which focuses more heavily on team fights, And I'm going to show you what we're going to do is sign on a team fight. When a team fight starts, you always want to hit people with your ultimate. 
while you're connected with the ultimate, you're not only keeping yourself alive, but your ultimate heals your allies around you for damage you deal. So you're almost like a DPS healer machine of death. But that also means sometimes you have to hit the tanks just to keep yourself and your others alive. You don't always have to run for the carry because you need to use your healing to stay in the fight and keep yourself durable. And just because you're hitting tanks doesn't mean you have to cast your stuns on the tanks. Always throw your stun at one of the ranged carries or peel for your ranged carry, meaning I'm going to stun someone that's going to try to kill my carry. Maybe it's a Zin Zhao, maybe it's work, and always use your stun to interrupt alts like Nunu or Cat or someone like that. And this next clip is going to show exactly what I'm talking about where you have to hit the tanks. Because right here, me and Malphite go way deep just to take out their carry, and in return, they kill all of our carries because I'm not there to peel for my carry and heal them with my lifesteal. And while we were able to kill their carries and most of their team, Mordekaiser and Castle were enough to clean up both me and Malphite. This next clip shows a different way to approach team fights as a scion, where actually I don't go in right away with my tanks, I take a minute, come around the back after they've all blown their CC, so there's nothing left there to stop me, so I'm free to just do damage to anyone left and just clean them up. And in situations like these where their carry is so far back and even behind walls where he can just sit there and unload on your team, your life stealing is not going to outheal that. You have to go for the carries. And it works out for us a lot better this time because Malphite chose to stay with our support and our carry and keep him alive rather than going for their carry, which I'm going to do by myself. Try to pay attention to my health bar during this next fight. It really showcases how much healing Scions all can do just when he's hitting people around him. I have three or four people hitting me in this next clip, and I can't, can't die just because I'm healing so much. I do eventually die because I end up diving the fountain, but I do so much damage and so much healing that it's unrecoverable for them, and we eventually win. And with that, I thank you for watching my Jungle 80 Scion build, and tell me if you guys like to see more uh, guides in the future. I don't really like doing guides because I feel there's a lot of people on YouTube that already do them, but if that's what people enjoy watching, I'm more than happy to oblige them. And as always, leave plenty of feedback and tell me what I can do better because I know I'm pretty terrible at this.